Ashley Siora, welcome to Women in Golf. Thank you. Thanks, Allie, for having me. And we're so excited to have you. And a quick introduction, you are the founder and CEO of Women on Fairways. And we've been watching you and we are so excited to get kind of the download of what got you here and kind of what's next on your horizon as you're in this industry. And again, what, what got you here? So it's going to be, I know, a fascinating conversation. <laughs> I love it. Good. Well, we start all these conversations off with how you got into kind of the sport, into this world of golf. Yeah. So I kind of have a little bit of a story, but um, I will probably preference this that COVID happened. And <laughs> that to me was a game changer in my life and what I was going to do. So um, quick background. I grew up in Minnesota. This is where my family is. And mm -hmm. I left um, after I graduated high school and went to Arizona State. Mm -hmm. So I started my career in recreation management and tourism, working for the Scottsdale Convention and Visitors Bureau. Okay. So over those 10 years of just starting my career, I was you know, promoting a beautiful world-class golf destination. And mm -hmm. so I got to work with the resorts and the golf courses. Um, my clients at the time were golf companies that would come to the destination. And um, I would put together these itineraries for them to showcase all of our golf and everything there is to do in Scottsdale. And then fast forward, I moved on to Palm Springs and was oh, there wow. for six and a half years doing the same thing for the entire Coachella Valley, marketing and promoting um, the greater Palm Springs, mainly internationally. Um, my former career took me all over the world, which was amazing. And I got to play golf, but it wasn't like what I'm doing now, like how involved I am. Yeah. Um, and then that turned into Los Angeles. And I did the same thing for LA Tourism for almost five years. Um, kind of took me a little bit out of the game just because yeah. a pillar wasn't LA wasn't known for a golf destination. Yeah, so, right. um, but I still kind of kept my, you know, my relationships and my contacts and then COVID mm -hmm. happened and my world shut down and I lost yeah. my job and I had to make that decision to figure out what I was going to do. And I was living downtown LA and I was like, I can't do this. Oh and gosh. So traveled back to Minnesota, where in my mind, I was going to be here for like three months <laughs> and <laughs> just trying to figure things out. Hmm. And um, I just, you know, it was like a part of me that was like my, my industry was shutting down. I didn't know what I was going to do. No one was hiring. So I just started playing way more golf than, cause that's all I had really to do. And I was playing mm -hmm. golf and I had joined a women's chapter here, um, the LPGA oh. amateurs. And there was one like Saturday or whatever, when I had four of the ladies say, Hey, Ashley, when we start traveling again, can you book us a golf trip? Stop. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that's yes. I can of course, do yeah. that. <laughs> oh, and um, so fortunately cool. yeah, that, yeah. And so I just was able to kind of use my resources and start reaching out to people in the golf industry and former clients and asking them like, okay, how do I market to women? And, mm -hmm. you know, the big conversation was if you can tap into this market, um, it'll be amazing because we haven't been able to quite do the women's golf trips. Like you yeah. are envisioning women's golf trips. So that's, so that that's so kind of how that cool. all, like the whole thing started. That's amazing. So I have some questions that go back probably. Yeah. Further than even that started, but I have to ask just because it was fresh. So, um, was it Abby from For the Ladies that you're that you work with? Um, I didn't. I didn't work with her. I've met her, okay. so she oh, was like it, one of it. my reach out contacts that I yeah. touched base with. Um, a lot of the my former clients were golf companies like what I'm doing, but they were all men, and so yeah. I was talking to them and just kind of asking them how do they put their golf trips together and and it's just it was just a lot of conversation reaching out to golf resorts that I had relationships mm -hmm. with and and courses and so that's really how it all kind of just unveiled oh that's amazing okay and I'm mm -hmm. gonna I'm gonna go back and ask a little bit of just sure. from a young age like did you golf when you were younger or was yeah it like, when you first started golfing, was that something that just family brought that to you or did you golf in high school or? 
No, never golfed in high school Mm because I was a dancer. So I take that side. (laughs) But my family, even from my grandparents, I mean, everyone was like golfers, but definitely social golfers. So we love to get out. And growing up in Minnesota, it like here in the Midwest, like what I'm realizing now being back as an adult, how many golf courses, how many golfers per capita we have in Minnesota, the Midwest is just saturated with, Mm -hmm. you know, golf like people who just love to be outside and it's a very outdoors destination here too and so Mm -hmm. um you know I did a little bit when I was younger my parents put us in the league and then I quit and it wasn't until I got into my career that I then had to figure out this game because I was getting invited to like corporate golf (laughs) tournaments and clients were coming in and I had to play with them and so Mm -hmm. it wasn't until I got into my adult life and in my career that I had to learn the game Yeah. And that resonates with me because it was, my upbringing was very similar and relationship with golf was always just social. And my parents loved to golf. They still do. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't golf high school. In high school, it wasn't my sport. College, it wasn't my sport. I didn't touch a thing of it like during college until I met my husband and, um, and work like that was, and my dad always said like, you will learn how to golf so that you've got that as a networking tool because it's exactly Mm -hmm. what it is. So um, I'm sure you appreciate it for the same reason. Now, are you, have you become a better golfer with being in this space fully or does it, because for me, I, people are like, you must golf all the time. And I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I have zero time really, um, which is really a reflection of yeah. like the clothes I design where I'm like, no, my, my golf clothes I'm designing, I'm literally more in them from a lifestyle standpoint than I am golfing. So yeah. Um, but is, do you find the same thing that this, I've, yeah, I mean, I've gotten, I've gotten better. I've learned a lot more about the game than just Mm -hmm. going out there and just playing around. Like I've actually learned more about the, not necessarily the etiquette, because I've always had that, but more of like Mm -hmm. the rules and things like that. But I still consider myself a social golfer. Like I love to go out there and just being out and enjoying it and Mm -hmm. not, taking it too seriously because I also yeah. want to make sure that's a welcoming feel for a lot of women when they come on yes. these trips. That's the one mm-hmm. question that I get asked is like, oh, if there's a lower <laughs> handicap, like, mm-hmm. am I going to be matched with a lower handicap or I'm yeah. just kind of a social golfer? Is that okay? Do I have to be really good to come on your trips? Like, so I just, you know, yeah. play in a very, you know, inviting, welcoming way, but also it's, you know, to your point, it's a family sport yeah. like we all play together and and yeah. that's just been really fun over the years that's so neat and I think I'm sure you find this with your trips and the women you're around that I think every mm-hmm. uh, most women have that mentality like no just call like come play it doesn't matter how good you are like that's not what yep. it's about at all right <laughs> yep exactly <laughs> that's so exactly cool. that's yeah so, that's really neat so um as you obviously got into your career playing golf more and then the development of women on fairways. Like, can you talk a little bit more about the business and the kind of the process of, again, COVID obviously propelled you into mm-hmm. this of looking for what's next in terms of your career. And um, what was the process like of starting that? Was it a six month process of getting women on fairways kicked up, you know, and, um, And just the process for you as you try to grow and market the business, like how is Mm -hmm. that being the founder and CEO of that? I mean, it's been such an interesting and, but an amazing journey. I mean, when Mm -hmm. you start something from ground zero, which is what I did, and it's different when you're building a travel company when you're not selling an actual product. Like I don't Mm -hmm. have something tangible that I can put on my website. I'm selling experiences Mm -hmm. and trying to get women, because that is kind of the lane I'm staying in. I mean, I will, you know, open my company up down the road to men's, you know, if there's couples Mm -hmm. and things like that. But like right now um, for women, like having them trust you that they can plan, you can plan this trip for them or that they're going to have this experience because that really is what travel is about. It's the experience that you have. Mm -hmm. And so I really kind of look at what I've designed over the last couple years is just, you know, selling an experience, a golf experience, a golf and Mm -hmm. lifestyle experience. Um, 
I will say that I was very fortunate to start a travel company in the middle of the pandemic when many major travel companies were dealing with cancellations and refunds yeah. and, you know, all this stuff that the travel companies had to do. I took all of 2021 basically mm -hmm. to build the foundation of my company. Um, cause the idea kind of sparked towards the end of 2020. And then I was able to kind of spend that time and with my business plan, with my website, with my social media channels, and just kind of learn a little bit more about the business side of things. And, also try to figure out how I can start getting book of business and how I can mm -hmm. start marketing myself to people who have had yeah. to cancel their trips or re <laughs> or repost their trips, you know? Yeah. And now all of a sudden I'm like getting into this space of, I've always been a B2B, um, mm -hmm. kind of in my career has always been B2B and now I'm a B2C, you know, I'm yeah. business to consumer. And that's right. been an, more of an eye opening experience than I had thought. Um, yeah. And I don't yeah. doubt it. I do feel like, um, is there a specific channel in terms of your reach to a customer or the market that um, has worked best for you? Like, is it, is it Instagram? Is it LinkedIn? Like, where's, yeah. where have you found the most direct access to like your customers? And I'm sure a lot of it's word of mouth. I don't doubt for a second mm -hmm. that that's probably a lot of your business too. Yeah, word of mouth and referrals is probably going to be my mm -hmm. meme, but I would say Instagram has been, um, but I'm also like, I'm being much better over these last couple of months of doing more email marketing because I yeah. also feel like the demographic of women that are kind of coming on these trips, mm -hmm. they have that disposable income, they have yeah. a little bit more of their free time, yeah. might not necessarily always be on social media. So right, I've had right. to relook at the way that I'm marketing myself. Mm -hmm. And so it just so happens that I'm actually launching a new webinar series where I'm inviting my database to come on and kind of do this. Like it's a webinar where yeah. they get to know me. They yeah. don't see me by just like a picture or an right. email. <laughs> and I'm hoping that also mm -hmm. gains the relationship and I can start yeah. building those relationships and trust and when, when we'll, um, you know, book trips and, and all of that moving forward. Oh, so good luck. That's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Really Thank nice, you. Nice, a little bit more intimate way of, yeah, getting yeah. yourself out there in the business. So that's really, that's mm -hmm. exciting. Were you, will you host that on YouTube or will, how will you host? I'm uh, probably going to put it on. Yeah. I'm still yeah. kind of working on that back end of stuff. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you know, I, get it. I took a lot yes. of things for granted when I had a company that had oh, a marketing team and an accounting team. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, for right now, it's I'm going to host those on YouTube and hopefully Exciting. be able to do more of expanded reach. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, exciting. Yeah. When will that start? Is that coming up? Um, I have my first one actually tomorrow. Oh, good. Good. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. And it's called Wine Wednesdays with Women on Fairways. Oh, stop. I love that. <laughs> so it's it's during the evening. So it's just basically grab uh, your favorite 19 pole beverage. Let's just oh, talk all that. things golf travel. I can talk about my upcoming trips. Cool. Um, and then I'm doing that twice a month. And then hopefully, you know, that'll just expand down the road. It's That'll so, be fun. And a casual yeah. approach to doing that. That's wonderful. Oh, yep. Neat. Yep. Now, um, is it from your standpoint and your team, is it just you right now or have you gotten to it the point? It is. Of, is it? Oh, kudos to you. <laughs> I know. I know. And it's, I'm sure, it's a... it, I was ahead, sorry. I'm sure it feels like it's a lot. Obviously, that's a lot, but I'm sure you, you almost get to that breaking point where it's like, what's what helps needed next? And are you to that mm -hmm. point, do you think? Or do you think you'll ride this wave of managing it your self no i think next year i do need to get um or i would love to hire like um an assistant or i've yeah. even thought about reaching out to the local colleges here like in the off season yeah. so there's so many you know we have a great team the university of minnesota has a great women's golf team um mm -hmm. and like also bringing on like someone young that can i can mentor but then also you know, who knows where that would lead. Um, yeah. And it just helps if they have some sort of, you know, understanding of the golf industry yeah. and, um, yeah. you know, the golf segment. So do you think there I'm would be that, that angle pretty... of, of that person there being valued as somebody that's kind of hospitality focus in terms mm -hmm. of, yeah, 
college. If so. they have a career in hospitality mm -hmm. or even in marketing. I mean, yeah, if I can offload my social media, <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> it's an animal. It is such an animal. That's so crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it takes a lot of time and that balance of not getting down the trenches on that. I get it. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit about if I was to go on or reach out to you, what's the process for somebody that is interested in a women's golf trip and how do you work through kind of what the options are or what, what you tailor mm -hmm. for them? What kind of process does that look like? Yeah. So this year, um, I launched what's called my swing and sip golf experiences. Mm -hmm. So when I say a product, this is actually yeah. what I'm looking to build and expand are these experiential golf trips for women. And mm -hmm. um, I have three that I'm doing next year that I've launched. And these are trips that are open to all skill levels, um, you know, do like friend duos or a single, a solo golfer that wants to come on and I escort them. So I mm -hmm. only, and I take 11 ladies. So it's 12 nice. of us and we go to a destination and the entire trip is planned for you. Like all you need to do. And I kind of have this motto, show up with your clubs and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> because from the moment you get off your airplane and you're met at baggage claim by a driver, they take you to the resort. I'm there meeting you. And then the next four days are all taken care of from golf. We usually do two rounds of golf. Um, I Certain destinations, I will partner with a teaching pro and we'll do a clinic, oh, nice. welcome reception, final night dinner. And then I do a day of destination activities. So getting you off oh. property, arranging something fun for the group. Um, and again, it's my experiential golf trip. So it's mm -hmm. the kind of the golf that's brought us all together, but it's also the destination, yeah. what we can do as a group making friends. Um, that's really my kind of my, what I've been launching these next, yeah. like for this next year are my swing and sips. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. And how long are those trips? It sounds like three or four days. Is that four days, five yeah, or four. four nights, five days. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. um, it usually is like a Thursday to a Monday or a Wednesday okay. to Sunday kind of travel yeah. pattern, depending on yeah. the destination. Um, my first one and since we're all like obviously from the midwest and cold weather destinations and i have a lot of women <laughs> yeah. who are from east coast midwest that have reached mm -hmm. out to me that my goal is to have one golf trip in our off season so you will yeah. always have a place to go um and play if you need to get out of the winter winter months <laughs> i appreciate that especially being over in cleveland so i'm in this <laughs> yep, midwest you with you but the golf season always feels too short. So especially for those people yeah. that aren't, um, maybe aren't your snowbirds that do retreat to warmer temperatures. Yep. So this is a good outlet for, this is a good outlet for them. Um, where are, are you allowed to share kind of those three destinations you have lined up for those? Yeah. So I have, um, in January, so January, starting at January 18th through the 22nd is, um, I just visited the new newly remodeled PGA national, um, mm -hmm. which is down in Palm beach, Florida. So that's in January and that resort just went through a huge renovation. So if anyone has been there, down there, it was just yeah. down there, like, um, it's a couple months ago and there, they were, um, yeah, they're going through a lot of work. It seems like a lot of resorts down in Naples have been going through a lot of work. It's kind of weird. I jumped around yep. a couple of them and new clubhouses, all this, I mean. New clubhouses, yeah, new lobby. There are five mm -hmm. golf courses. And cool. then, so that one's in Palm Beach. And then my um, doing a Valentine's, Galentine's Day um, golf trip for women. And that's to Sea Pines Resort on mm -hmm. Hilton Head, um, yep. February 14th through the 18th. And that one actually, I think, is going to be sold out and soon. I have um, four nice. spots left on that. Wow. Congratulations. Um, That's awesome. Thank you. I'm excited for that one. And then my next one, which I just did with 12 ladies in August, I went to Big Cedar Lodge. And I took 12 oh. ladies to the Ozarks. It was unbelievable. Cool. I mean, the golf, yeah. um, 
it was so much fun. And so I actually just booked it again for next year for 2024. And we're going to do fall golf, which will be beautiful in October. Well, Um, um, do you think that will happen quite a bit for you that the women in those events are right away? Like if you plan this for next year, I'll be there again. Do you think you'll get a lot of that? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I already have like when I'm with the group ladies and I'm just asking Mm -hmm. like, where should I go? Like, and give me suggestions too, because um, some of the destinations that I know, I'm doing it because I have relationships with the hotels yeah. and the golf courses yeah. and and I know them. And that's a big thing is I don't is. want to plan these trips without understanding the destination first because yeah. I wear my destination hat. Yeah. Um, so, but now that I was at, now that I went to Big Cedar Lodge and I got to yeah. experience it, I, I was like, I will have a commitment to take a group there every year. It is that amazing and you walk away um not only like with the golf but just the whole surroundings and being in the ozarks and the sunsets and the sunrises it was just beautiful that's so that's so neat well that's cool too i'm sure the traction of all this and and you probably really the networking piece of it and the fact that you're spending one-on-one time with 11 ladies like the relationships Mm -hmm. that you build and they build it just i'm sure um almost creates this like new friend group, right? Even if it's women that weren't part of those 11, but I'm sure mm-hmm. you get that. It sounds like you sell single spots and maybe two yep. friends that come. So it's really, really cool and unique. Yeah. Yeah. That's I exciting. actually, when um, my first trip that I did, I did uh, to San Antonio in March mm-hmm. and one of the ladies then joined me in Big Cedar Lodge and brought a friend. So oh, cool. it's, it's that <laughs> kind of, you know, once you get there and I think Women and golf, um, we love the game, but it's also, you know, going on a golf trip hasn't been as, you know, in the forefront as yeah. guys' golf trips, you know? Yeah. And I think now more and more women are realizing that they can travel and play golf and do yeah. other things like the spa, you know, a wine tour, yeah. all these other activities. And, you know, you will get um, some people that are can easily travel on their own or... Yeah. They just feel comfortable if they're bringing a friend. And so, you know, these trips are made for solo golfers or bring a friend. um, And yeah. So what's the, the, um, and you've got, like you said, I think that target demographic obviously has the flexibility Mm -hmm. to travel and expendable income to do that. Um, What's kind of your typical age range of women that are attending these trips? I, I mean, my one um, that I did with Big Cedar Lodge, the age spread was 40, like early 40s, um, mm-hmm. all the way to 70. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yep. that's really neat. I love that. And probably, so, like you said, all, all different skill levels. All different skill levels. Um, that trip, I would say, is, is definitely more geared towards the golf, just because mm-hmm. you're around these like amazing courses that are designed. I mean, Tiger Woods designed Payne's Valley was one of his first public courses. And you're just, and so they tend to, they were a little bit challenging, Mm -hmm. but I think if you're out there and you have a four caddy, you know, you're still going to have a great time out there and play and um, just being out in that nature and that sort of environment was Mm -hmm. amazing for those ladies. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's so neat. So you mentioned even before we got on the call that you have a couple of warmer climate trips coming up. Are those personal yeah. trips or are they work, work trips? No, they're actually work trips. So, okay. um, so tell us I, where you're going. So I'm going to Cabo the end of this mm-hmm. month. Um, mm-hmm. I'm playing in a golf tournament there. It's an industry golf tournament. I've, I know the organizers. I've been playing in these tournaments for many, many years. Um, But when I'm there, I'm also going to look at properties, golf courses, and decided to build my own itinerary for a Cabo women's golf trip for next year. So when I do some of these business trips, I'm also looking at it to how I can build this for a trip. So Cabo is going to be one of my international destinations for next year. And then Mm -hmm. after that home, and then I'm going to the uh, newer resort um, that just opened up, I mean, a couple years ago, but in Anguilla. So it's in the Caribbean down by St. Martin. (laughs) Um, It's like, it's going to be a dream like that to me. I'm like, and it's the first week in November. And so it's probably going to be snow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You'll be okay with going somewhere warm by then. Um, Yeah. That's that's so exciting. And so that one again is a business trip. It's a business trip. So again, look, 
Mm -hmm. Looking at the property. Um, I have my swing and sip golf experiences, which are mm -hmm. the ones that I'm doing where I'm escorting and bringing women. However, if there was a group of say four ladies or eight ladies um, from their own private country club or a group of friends yeah. that wanted to go somewhere, I'm able to customize oh, any of okay. these trips that I've either already done or mm -hmm. like Anguilla looking at a new destination that cool. I can build their itinerary for them. And then they can just, um, we work on dates and then I'm able to book it for them and they go on their so golf neat. trip. So I'm That's allowed really to, neat. I kind of have like two different types of the business yeah. that I'm working on the small group escorted or customized golf trips. That's great. And that was going to be one of my questions was the <laughs> ability for women to reach out to you and say, I've got, mm -hmm. you know, eight ladies that want to go on a trip. Can you help us put yeah. something together? So it's absolutely something you can put together with your partnerships and those resorts that you feel, you know, yep. comfortable that right? I've already recommending and comfortable selling yeah. um, or kept promoting, or I've mm -hmm. already taken a group of ladies there. So I've already yeah. kind of customized and built this itinerary and we just make so it cool. for them. And um, yeah, so I, a lot of options out there for yeah. golf resorts yeah. and golf destinations. Oh, uh, that's, that's exciting. So I have to ask, do you, from a personal standpoint, do you have a family? Are you? Um, I have a family, but I'm. I am not married. I am single. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Anyone? Um, <laughs> I am an amazing. <laughs> anyone watching? No. no um, right. I an amazing auntie. I have um, cool. a four-year-old nephew, a two-year-old mm -hmm. nephew, and a one-year-old niece. Okay. Oh, cool. So, so you can live vicariously yeah. through, yeah, your family, yeah. and they're all in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Uh, my sister with my two nephews are, mm -hmm. and then my brother and his wife and my niece live in San Diego. Oh, cool. So you have some good spots to visit too. Yes. That's neat. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I wondered on the, on the travel front, obviously your job is demanding in terms of going on these trips and all that. So I wondered how yeah. you managed any and all and of that it from a um, personal standpoint. And I think for, I don't know, for me, I mean, I, my entire 20 plus years career with um destinations oh kind of took me on the road i mean i was gone all yeah. the time and and i made that decision i think yeah. subconsciously to mm -hmm. follow this career path and kind of climb yeah. climb the ladder in that aspect and yeah. um you know i look back on it now and i was like oh okay now i'm this age and <laughs> <laughs> but it you comes know. quick, doesn't it? I know. I figure, okay, I'm in the golf industry, so at least I have um, uh, a much wider range of <laughs> yeah. opportunity yeah. out there you with do. finding I, someone in the golf industry. True, and I, you've got so much momentum going too, and something that that really yeah. is really new. I mean, you, and I'm sure you have an energy and passion about it that's just all-consuming and feels so good so you're yeah that's amazing you have the time to focus on that and and be in all these cool places to do that research and grow the business so cool. yeah i'm excited i'm excited to see where this where this business goes and it's yeah. just um you know everyone that i have talked to have been so supportive and open mm -hmm. and just like wow this is an amazing like yeah. idea or this is something that's needed in the golf industry. Um, right. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that do a great job in planning golf trips, yeah. but on the experiential side of things and mm -hmm. for, you know, tailoring these trips towards more women and women friendly yeah. destinations or courses or resorts. Um, yeah. I think that's, there was a little bit of a gap there that I'm now yeah, trying to like make my very, mark in. Right. And very underserved. And I think, um, I mean, I found, and I'm totally new to this industry. I'm, you know, launched in January, but I'm, oh, 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 there, it just popped back. Yeah. Oh, did there it? I'm strange. Okay, yeah. thank you. I'll I'll repeat that. Yeah, thanks. Um, no, I was just saying that in the um, time that I've started this business, I'm so um, I'm kind of floored about the commu a community around golf and women, and I think mm -hmm. that's. It's growing, but it's so supportive. And mm -hmm. um, even like the purpose of this, like women in golf, it's literally just to learn and hear from women like yourself of all the different ways women are involved in the sport. And mm -hmm. and it's fascinating. And there's such, I think, a strong network of all of us that are like, you know, 
in that outreach of how can I help you and who do I know, which is the nature of obviously business, but I think golf as well. Um, yeah. And so it's really cool. And I think there's so many interconnected pieces and people involved in on the women's side and just a passion mm -hmm. to grow the sport for women in so many different ways. And that's, that's, what's really cool is that there's something for everybody in the sport. So it's mm -hmm. really, really neat. And I think contagious, the like energy behind it is um, really contagious and very, very neat place to be. And I'm sure you feel the same way that it I do. feels like a family in itself. Yeah. I know. I've, I was like, I've met so many amazing people and even yeah. just talking to women, just because I know the game has brought so many more women to the forefront and just playing. Yeah. But then within that segment, you have all these different also levels of women players or women who, yeah. you know, are doing it for on a business side, um, you know, all skill yeah. levels. And so it's just really fun to see that like me, like I don't get to play as often as I, I probably play more on the road <laughs> than I do yeah. in my own backyard. Yeah. And everyone's like, Oh, have you played right. this course in this course? And I was like, yeah, I haven't even played in my backyard um, that much this summer. So, <laughs> right. right. Um, I wish, but no, yeah, that's, that's but, so, but that's so okay. Neat. And I think, yeah, yeah, even if you just get out a couple times, I mean, to me, I'm also looking at the game as like trying to understand that it's a, it's a wellness part. It's a mental state. I'm like, when I'm on yeah. that course for a couple hours, like I can kind of let go of whatever's happening, you know, behind the scenes and I can just mm -hmm. be present and, just yeah. enjoy being out in nature and, and all of that stuff. And that's really, you know, mm -hmm. a big part of why I love the game too. It's just, you, yeah. you're in such a different environment. Yeah. Um, yeah. It takes you kind of away yeah. from the chaos that <laughs> we yeah. all live in. So it, it is it's yeah. a really kind of rejuvenating like space to be and time to spend in it. So it's so mm -hmm. neat. And it's, I'm excited for you and the growth of all this and, do you think, I mean, and just to wrap things up in kind of the next year or two, do you have any major goals for the business or the growth of the business? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely am. My goal is to get, like I said, eight for next year, which is a, yeah. which is a big goal to get eight yeah. of these destination trips out. Mm -hmm. um, I also envision women on fairways playing a role in not only the travel space, but other spaces um, within the golf industry. So it's yeah. kind of like a brand that I'm able to build and recognize if it's for networking opportunities, if it's for retail, if it's for, you know, mentorship, like there's just so many things that I think you can grow your company as. Um, yeah. But right now over the next two years, it's focused on these golf trips, yeah. also getting internationally. So hopefully being able to go over to cool. Europe and, other oh. parts of the world um, uh, with, you know, yeah. with women or with couples or, you know, anybody who wants to just go out and play an experiential, go on an experiential golf trip. Oh, it's so cool. Well, I hope like yeah. always hard to find time, but I, I would love to sign up sometime. That would be so neat. And I don't have a yeah. lot of friends that golf really. So I, I even love the idea of that, just being able to meet more women in that way and sign up. Mm -hmm. So that's, That'll be on my list. No, and would be, I, oh, we'd love to have you. I know. And the other, and like, I really think, as you said, as, um, as you see the business growing into more than just trips, like it'll happen organically, right? Like it is, mm -hmm. I think that's, what's so cool about this. And I felt the same way that there's, um, the people you meet, the, um, I think the engagement and the collaboration that so many women want to mm -hmm. have, um, that it, that it does, it turns into more and it's like something beyond just trips, yeah. like absolutely will help it happen organically. And that's the, mm -hmm. the interest of women. And I think other, but not even just women, but I think everybody wanting to foster this and collaborate and serve each other and help grow. And, mm -hmm. um, I've got this cool trip with um, Four Hire. I don't know if you've heard of those ladies. Oh, yeah. Courtney. I know. Cor is it Courtney? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's like master so networker. Cool. Yeah. So like <laughs> she is. Yeah. She's, um, I've got a women in golf with her um, this week. Like excited to have her, but. Um, oh, she's great. If she is. And it's really cool because I'll go to the Country Club of Georgia for their event in November. And it's kind of, I, I keep explaining it as like a career fair for women um, mm -hmm. trying to get into golf and. 
even that, like, I love that I'm going to have the opportunity to speak on the panel. And it's just like, it's really opening more women to like what, what there is in golf. And I think it's a perfect Mm -hmm. example of what you're saying is like, how can I um, help and like service women in this space and all that? Like you're, it's so cool. And I think as a founder and CEO, you're in this position of um, Mm -hmm. taking your time and energy and building something new. It's really really cool. And I like, I applaud you for all the hard work that I know it takes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, it. <laughs> it's no easy yeah. feat for sure. But anyways, yeah. we are so, um, hold on. My husband's about to walk in the door. So I thought I was about to wrap up. <laughs> um, so yeah. anyways, I can't thank you enough for being on women in golf with us and sharing your story and just what's next. We're excited to support you and kind of follow you along as you get to go to these really Thank lovely you. places. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate it. And just having yeah. this conversation with you. Yeah. And again, like That's you mentioned, cool. like the support and the relationships yeah. that you just build in this community. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty amazing. And, and I will say like, I have watched you because I think <laughs> this PGA yeah. show was when you first um, exhibited and yeah. I was like, I need to meet you. And every time I walked <laughs> past your booth, you were like busy. That's and sweet. I was just like, Oh, I didn't have a chance to oh, meet you. <laughs> that's cool. Well, you give you're so sweet. I know it was such a whirlwind of a week. And are you going to go yeah. to the PGA show in January then? Will you be there again? I Yes, I will. So oh, we will have good. to meet up for oh, face to face. They will, yeah, or maybe a sure. cocktail post. <laughs> post yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I would love that. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, well, I, I can't wait to just, like I said, watch you grow and we'll stay connected. Obviously, it's fun to have these new relationships and I'm going to get yeah, on one of your trips one of these days. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much. Thanks, Ashley.